All right. Gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. And uh, it is my pleasure to uh, have this opportunity to uh, interview both of you distinguished uh, alumni. Uh, this is a part of living history, so I'm really, really excited about this. Yeah. Uh, Charles, how did you hear about PMC? And I'm not, I know how I heard about mm -hmm. PMC was through my mother. Uh, I, don't not know, I do not know the answer to the question as to how she heard about PMC. Mm -hmm. um, I know that she was looking for a school and she probably investigated through friends that she had, mm -hmm. but uh, we never really talked about how she came across that name. All I know was I was on a train out of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, Keith, how, how, how about you? How did you hear about yeah, PMC? I, as I mentioned before, uh, our counselors at Boys High, we had a, a, a lot of different uh, interviews. And one of the interviews that I had was with uh, Pennsylvania Military College. And I actually came down in, um, if I remember, in the early spring of 1956. And if I recall, I was uh, actually interviewed by uh, uh, Dr. Maul. And quite frankly, I was impressed. I, I came by myself. And I went back and I told my... Uh, mother about it and father and they they, they were also impressed and I, f I felt that one uh, I wanted to uh, go not on not only because of the uh, academics but also the military but also the uh, the financial aids that they had at that time compared to the other schools I felt that they were uh, outstanding and maybe we can discuss that later mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well uh, you kind of sort of answered this, both of you, about uh, what made you decide to enroll in PMC. Charles, sounds like you didn't have much of a choice. Almost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it did start off with Pennsylvania Military Prep School. Uh -huh. um, I was uh, here for two years um, and graduated in 1956. And at that particular time, I applied to several colleges the two top choices were PMC and uh, Morehouse. Um, Morehouse was really pretty high on my list, but after a discussion with, with my, my parents, mainly my mother, um, I ended up at PMC. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and I don't regret that, that uh, choice. It was a good choice for me. And Keith, how about you? What made you decide? I think my, my interview and visit to the um, campus. And also, I, I think that um, I was impressed with, the, um, uh, with all the people that I talked to um, when I came here. I, I would say the major factor was the uh, people that I talked to. Mm -hmm. Who uh, might be some of them? Uh, some of the people I talked to uh, was uh, Dr. Maul, and also a, um, uh, a Mr. Hunsinger, who became a um, kind of a lifetime friend. He was in the uh, financial aid office. And I also talked to some of the uh, cadets that were there during the uh, interviews. It was like a, uh, a student. I, I don't recall, um, you know, seeing Charlie at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, neither do I recall seeing uh, Scotty, um, Howard Scott, at that time. So I, I'd say it's the people and also the uh, physical lo location of uh, PMC. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, attending college has never been ex inexpensive, even back in the day. Uh, Charlie, how did you finance your education? Well, family financed it. Uh, they decided that uh, this was a place for me to come in. I agreed with them and they financed my education. Mm -hmm. So I was really lucky to, in today's world, I think that would be extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, most students don't get out of college without having uh, a long list of college loans that they have to repay over many years. So I was very fortunate. Mm -hmm. and, and Keith, how about you? Yeah, uh, m my financing came from um, family, obviously. Uh, 
my family was very uh, supportive. Uh, it also came because of my uh, New York State education and my father's uh, military background. I had what was called a um, one a national defense loan and also a New York State higher education assistance scholarship. And, and, and those two were for four years. The loan was a payback, and I paid that back, I think, in the um, 1970s. And that was through Citibank of uh, New York. And if I recall, it was about um, uh, $5,000 which was a lot of money for, uh, for that time, but at the same time, the interest rate was very low. Uh, and it was almost like a yearly payment that had to be made. Uh, also, at uh, Widener, there was a lot of jobs on campus, and those uh, jo different jobs, which I'll talk about later, um, gave me some additional cash to uh, pay uh, tuition. Uh, financially, though, uh, also the financial aid office, um, Hunsinger, they were most helpful in uh, different ways to uh, pay uh, tuition. If I recall, and Charles could back me up on this, the tuition at that time was about two, three thousand a year. That's about right. Yeah, which was kind of stiff, but at the same time, compared to some of the other schools, it was uh, quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. Did that include uh, uniforms? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, I, I think you're referring to, uh, the, the, the uniforms were made by a tailor called uh, Bell. And Bell was a graduate of uh, PMC. <laughs> and uh, he, the, all the uniforms were uh, fitted. And I, I think they were reasonable. And I am not sure if we paid Bell directly or the school paid Bell. I, I don't know I how don't that worked. I don't remember paying them directly, but it could have been handled that way. Yeah, I, I, I think it was part of the tuition. Yeah. Part of the tuition, yeah. Mm -hmm. Joe? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about uh, financing. I did work during the summers. Mm -hmm. uh, one summer I really remember, it stands out very strongly <clears throat> in my mind, is that uh, I worked in uh, New York City, Central, uh, what was it? The called? Village. Chief? No, no, not the village. It was called uh, Central State Central Train Station. At oh, Nedix, Grand Central. Grand Central okay. at the Needix Hot Dog Stand. All right. <laughs> and that was a job that Keith was responsible for me getting, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, but I had other odd, odd jobs during summers too. But that that one really uh, does stand out in my mind. Yeah, that that uh, was quite a famous brand of hot dog and soda. Yeah. Yeah. Even even here. After, after you worked at Nenix, you didn't want orange juice or hot dogs anymore <laughs> for years. <laughs> yeah. well, well, gentlemen, again, f just for the record, uh, Charles, uh, what year did you enter PMC and uh, give us uh, your major and also your graduation date? Let's see. Um, I entered PMC after graduating from uh, Pennsylvania Military Prep School, 1956. Uh, my major was biology. Uh, and um, what was the other question? Graduation? Mm -hmm. Graduated Graduate. in 1961. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Keith? Yeah, I entered um, PMC after graduating from Boys High in June. I came to PMC in September of uh, 1956, and my major was uh, chemistry, and minor was biology, and that's where I first met uh, Charles, uh, Charles Lowry. I graduated in uh, 1960 with a bachelor science degree in uh, chemistry. Now, uh, this of course was a military school. Now, how did you see the impact of the military, the discipline on your personal life? Uh, it's had a tremendous impact on my personal life. Um, much more of an impact than I realized until I actually graduated and left college. Uh, it helped me to really um, pull together uh, the kind of discipline necessary for what success I may have achieved in my life. Uh, there are all kinds of distractions for young men uh, 
as you are going through various stages of your life, but I was able to really focus on what I wanted to do and to be able to accomplish it, and much of it I attribute to the discipline that I gained through the experience of uh, being a part of PMC. Mm -hmm. And Keith, how about you? I would um, say the same with what Charles just um, uh, summarized, uh, but, but I also, um, you know, just to add uh, a few more sentences, I, I, I think the people that you met during that uh, period of American uh, history, during segregation, that they struck me as, you know, just, blame, uh, just being plain people. And I'm talking about students and faculty at Widener. And, uh, you know, as the years went by, not only the military, but the academic, I, I, I tend to remember the people and how they acted during that time, which, which was very positive, considered what was going on around uh, us in terms of uh, segregation. You have to remember that this, this was like the, uh, the, the almost the last decade of American segregation and things were very tensed. But I think on the Widener campus, um, in the military and in the academic life, uh, it, uh, whatever stress we have, it was more academic and um, uh, related to studies and not to outside uh, forces. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, men, this uh, was indeed a military school at the time. Did both of you receive an automatic commission, or was there another step before you entered the military, and or did you enter the military? Charles? Um, I entered the military, but not as a commissioned officer. Mm -hmm. um, I decided that I did not want a military career, um, and so I proceeded to organize my life toward another career academically, but end up going into the service and spending two years at Walter Reed Army Hospital in Washington, D.C. Uh, once I finished that obligation, then I went back to my other plans. Mm -hmm. Your tenure there at, at uh, did you say it was Walter Reed? Yes. Walter Reed. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this was much before you became uh, a veterinarian. That is correct. Was uh, correct. your tenure there some influence as to how you... Well, my tenure there uh, had to do with my background and, uh, that I gained from PMC as a biology major. Mm -hmm. I became a uh, laboratory assistant in, in microbiology and in and, uh, the electro, let's see, electron uh, uh, phoresis uh, laboratory. I think those are the main two uh, periods that I really worked in. Mm -hmm. But that was related to my background that I received those uh, positions. Mm -hmm. And Keith, uh, same question. Uh, did you actively enter the military? Or? Yeah. Uh, when I graduated in 1960, on graduation, I, I received my commission, second lieutenant. And in the fall, I went into the uh, U.S. Chemical Corps. And uh, that was Fort McCullen, uh, Alabama. And that's where I first got my image of going into the environmental field by working with um, nerve agents, um, chemical uh, agents, uh, also um, uh, radiological uh, agents. And from there, I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do, and I ended up in the environmental health and safety field for uh, 40 years of my life, working for companies like Westinghouse in Pittsburgh and Allied in um, uh, Morristown, New Jersey, and also the U.S. Um, uh, United States uh, Atomic Energy Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, any weapons of mass destruction while you were there? Uh, actually, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, my tenure, one of the things obviously that took place in 1961 in Idaho was the uh, uh, first uh, major accident of a subcritical uh, reactor in uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho, the National Reactor Testing Site. And uh, part of my job when I got there was to actually formulate the uh, report, which consisted of air samples, soil samples, aquatic, aquatic samples, 
and also uh, the photographs of the place. There were only two people, two fatalities, because it was a research uh, type um, uh, reactor and also ran by uh, General Electric. Uh, but, you know, th that was really the first runaway reactor in the history of, uh, uh, of, of the nuclear energy field.